In today's video, I want to teach you exactly how you can start your own Amazon FBA business and give you a step-by-step -step tutorial how you can take your business off the ground and sell your very first product online. What's up, you guys? It's Ben and welcome back to my channel where we talk about everything there is related to selling on Amazon. If this is the very first Amazon FBA video you have just come across, welcome. You have just came across one of the best business opportunities out there available to you in 2022. If you're like me and once you were tired of working for somebody else, slaving away 40, 50, 60, sometimes even 70 hours each and every single week just to make somebody else rich and wealthy without giving you any appreciation whatsoever, this is the right business model for you. Because unlike many of the other financial opportunities out there, such as investing in stocks and shares, crypto, or potentially gambling with NFTs, whether or not you will be successful on Amazon FBA depends on you and how much hard work you are willing to put in. None of what I'm about to tell you comes down to luck. It all comes down to how disciplined, determined, and motivated you are to leave your nine to five, start a side hustle that then you can scale up to a five, six, seven, potentially even an eight figure business and give you a much better financial future. In today's video, what I want to do is teach you how you can start your own Amazon FBA business. So make sure to bring a pen and a pad and take note of everything I'm about to tell you because what I'm about to say is extremely important. And whether or not you will be successful doesn't depend on where you come from, what knowledge you have, or what you know. It all depends on how hard you work you are willing to put in. I myself started selling on Amazon back in 2018. And just like a lot of you, I did not have any experience whatsoever in business, e-commerce, advertising, marketing at all. I just was determined of starting something on my own. I was sick and tired of traveling into central London each and every single day for about an hour, an hour and a half, stuck on a train like a sardine, just working for somebody else, getting by paycheck to paycheck, seeing no future. And for those of you that don't know this quote, this is something that changed my life forever. And that is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. This is where I realized that in order for me to change where my trajectory of life was going, I have to make a change myself. Instead of working for somebody else nine to five, I had to start working on my own business after work. I had to put the necessary time, effort and money in the very beginning so I can leave my nine to five and do what I'm doing now myself full time. And as of today, I'm happy to say that I am willing to put in everything aside and provide you with all the necessary time and all the necessary knowledge for you to do exactly what I've been doing. And I myself am no different to you at all. However, as of 2022, I am now selling at seven figures. That's right. I'm actually making over 80,000 pounds in sales each and every single month. And that is only going to go up from here. Now, for those of you that don't know, Amazon FBA is a great opportunity. Because of the pandemic and what people have experienced, Amazon FBA now enjoys more customers than they ever had before. Amazon FBA now reaches more households each and every single day, way more than they did before the pandemic. Customers now know the benefits and the convenience of Amazon, where they can, instead of going to a shopping mall, staying in a queue, waiting in line effectively to buy a product, they will simply go online, check into their Amazon account, make a purchase, and then get the product delivered the very next day. And with that being said, guys, let's get straight to the video. Also, guys, after watching this tutorial, if you believe that this is the right business model for you and you're destined and determined to get started as quickly as possible, but you feel like you need a little bit of extra help, a little bit of extra motivation and somebody else here to help you every step of the way, then please don't forget to check the links down below for my own personal mentorship, where I myself will help you every step of the way and make sure you don't make some of those newbie mistakes that new sellers tend to make. Also check the links down below for awesome by far the most reliable e-commerce accountants out there in the market helium 10 the best product research tool that i could find or tide the perfect business bank account to start off your amazon fba business also guys check all the link down below for my brand new fba mentor academy facebook group where i myself and other six seven figure sellers will be able to answer any of the questions that you may have when it comes to setting up your own amazon fba business all of the links will be down in the video. 
and let's get straight to it. So guys, the very first thing we need to do to start up your own Amazon FBA business is do a few setups. This is going to be a fully fledged full-time business guys and therefore we have to take it seriously. And if we are going to take it seriously, there are a few things we have to set up from the very beginning. Now it is really, really important to make sure that what I'm about to tell you, you do it in the right order. Otherwise, you may come across quite a few problems later down the line and you may end up stopping and not going ahead with this business model before it even started. So the very first thing we need to do guys is set up our own limited company and our own business bank account. Just like you have your own personal checkings account, your business has to have one too. Now you may want to think, well, I'm not 100% sure whether or not I'm going to start selling on Amazon. Do I have to set up a business in the very beginning? But the truth is guys, if you are going to take this professionally, if you do want to make this a full-time income, you should start a startup by setting up a business and don't worry too much about it. If it doesn't work out, it's very, very easy for that business to close down without having any issues whatsoever. Businesses open up and close down each and every single day when it comes to um, the UK marketplace. Now, you can do it two ways. Number one, you can either go through the government.co.uk website. Number two, you can go through my Tide affiliate partnership. And the reason why I recommend Tide is because number one, the interface is a lot easier. It will be a lot quicker for you to open up your own business. But more importantly as well, is the fact that when you do open up your own business and your business bank account with Tide, you will get 75 pounds deposited into your bank account to start off in the very beginning. And this is quite nice. It's quite encouraging to see straight away 75 pounds deposited in your business bank account to start off your business on the right foot and potentially pay off some of the subscriptions that you will have to sign up into very beginning. Now, to get to this affiliate partnership that I have with Tide, you will have to scroll down into the description. I will leave one of the links down below. Just click on them and this is the page that you should come up to. Now, the very first thing we have to do is effectively register a company and that is company registration right over here. Once that is clicked, the very next thing we need to do, guys, is we need to read through what exactly we need to have. Number one, we're going to have to pay a £12 incorporation fee. But this, unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately, with Tide will be paid on your behalf. So if you were going to do it via Gov.uk website, you will have to pay that via PayPal, whereas with Tide, they will do it for you. And as you can see, it is a streamlined process straight away, and you can get the incorporation, certificate of incorporation effect within a couple of hours, whereas with the government's website, it will take you a few days to receive that in the post. The first thing we have to do is to set up a company name. Now guys, don't put too much emphasis in the company name. The truth is what matters here is that you get started. It doesn't really matter what you call your own company because the only people that will see it is effectively your business bank account, HMRC, and that is it. A lot of people actually confuse the company name with your brand name and brand name is what matters guys brand name is what customers are going to see later down the line when you are starting to sell on Amazon and that is something that we're going to touch later on but in the very beginning what I would suggest you do is just type in your name and then potentially something that doesn't mean much to you it can literally be your name and Amazon or your name limited whatever and you can change it whether it's LTD or limited and click search what matters here is that that particular name is available and it is if it is available then Amazon straight away or sorry Tide will straight away allow you to start the registration process which is really really handy and as you can see here right now Ben Amazon LTD is fortunately available so we'll just continue with that what we then have to do is just read through the eligibility criteria and the government regulations. Truthfully, it's pretty straightforward, quite frankly. So we're just going to continue move forward. This is the memorandum of association, basically that you will formally um, abide by the Companies Act of 2006. Once again, this is one of these things where you simply just have to continue click next and next and next, where you eventually start putting in your own details. So the very first thing you have to obviously put in is your email address. This is the email address that is going to be associated with your business guys. So anything coming from the HMRC, anything coming in relation to your business is going to come to this email address. In my personal opinion, guys, you should really focus on separating what's 
personal and what's business, okay? And therefore, if you don't have a business email address just yet, make sure to create one because sooner or later, you will start getting a lot of business uh, related matters sent to your emails and you really want to keep those separate. So what I'll do, I'll just type in my email address right here and press next. And as you can see here, you have this little tile keep going forward every single time you click continue. So you know exactly how far along you are in relation to creating your own business and creating your business bank account. The very next thing we have to do is of course, put in our name and uh, continue. Now after that, we're gonna have to type in our date of birth. Then it's our uh, phone number. and then continue. Then it's going to be our address. And again, guys, make sure that you always double check every single bit that you put into the system because it will be a lot harder for you to change this later down the line, guys. So make sure to double check everything because this is super, super important. Okay. And we live more than three months there. Again, really, really important for you to double check all of this, guys. Next up, United Kingdom. Now, if you are living in another country outside of UK, make sure to correct this. Then you have to type in your nationality. Then you have to put in some security information. So your mobile number is already typed in, in the very beginning there. Then you put in potentially, I will put in my town of birth. So let's just put London. And let's say we put a uh, passport number. Okay, so this is just for security purposes in case you forget your email address or in case you forget um, your password or whatever. These are the security information that you will have to remember to access to your, your business and your business bank account. So make sure whatever you put in here, make sure to save it later down the line because this is really, really important. The last thing you want to be in the situation is where you really need to access some business information and you have no way of doing so. Then you will have to call up Tide, get the their help and so on and they're only open on the weekdays as well then you click continue you use your trading address or potentially add new address now for most of you guys will be using your user personal address now unless you have your own office where you're going to use a dedicated office to start your own amazon fba business or potentially you already have a business running that is like a corner shop or something and now you actually put in your, um, you want to sell your products online effectively, then you can add your new address and put in your business address. But in this case, it will be personal address and click continue. Here we also will say what is going to be the registered office address. And for those of you that are living in the UK, you can either use the personal trading address that you just typed in, you can add in a new address, or with Tide, you can actually get a virtual office address. So for those of you that don't really want to um, potentially show your details on the government the UK website, you don't want anybody else to know what your address is, any details in relation to you whatsoever, you can very easily get a virtual office address, which obviously you will have to pay monthly or annually. So it is completely up to you which one you choose. In my personal opinion, if you're in the UK, just use your trading or personal address if you're outside of UK or America and you want to sell into those countries then you get a virtual office address so we're just going to click on here we always have to choose which country of registration we type in we'll just go on continue with uh, England we're going to type in e-commerce because that effectively what Amazon FBA is so we're just going to go e-commerce See, unlike government's website who don't actually have that option, here on Tide, you can just type in e-commerce and that is exactly what Amazon FBA business is all about. We're gonna click continue. This is already populated for us, the SIC code, which again is really, really important. And just double check, it is retail sell via mail orders, house or via internet. Again, really, really important. Now you don't have to add additional SIC code, but if you are willing to potentially sell, um, you know, via a physical store or something else like that, then you may want to add an additional SIC code as well. But for most of us, this will not be relevant. We'll click continue. Um, is your company or any of its controlling persons a US citizen? That will be a no. 
do does your company or any of its controlling persons have a tax residency outside of the uk most of them will have no and does your company earn most of its uh, money by selling goods and services yes okay and now the very last part guys this is where you have to check everything guys i can't stress this enough make sure to check every bit of information that you're about to put in here because it is really really important once this is submitted it's going to be really difficult for you to change and amend those details later down the line and therefore as you can see here tide will tell you that you need to contact company's house directly so once everything is checked you will click this button right here and then click continue and that is it once that is done you will then get all of your paperwork sent to you via email and via um, post in the next few days all right guys so now that we got the business uh, registered effectively our now company is fully registered on gov.uk website the next thing we need to do is set up a business bank account which basically means we're going to have to click on open an account here again just go on to tide the affiliate link that i will leave below but instead of registering a company now click on open up an account now once you open an account the next thing we will come up is right here you're going to have to choose whether or not you have a registered company or a sole trader if you have been following this tutorial so far it will that this will be the option that you have to choose it's going to be the registered company then you must be a director of the company to open up an account which you should be by now so we're going to click on get uh, account and you will see a lot of similarities to the same process that we went through when it comes to setting up our own business it is very very similar to open up your own business bank account which frankly i quite like because it keeps things simple and it's something that we already have gone through so we're going to enter our email once again we're then going to click continue we have to type in our details once again click continue enter your date of birth click continue and once again guys i am going through this very very quickly but you have to make sure to make double check everything because later we will be adding all of the details onto our amazon seller account and if anything doesn't match up it will get flagged up by amazon's algorithm and they will take us onto this painful process of verification of everything because they want to make sure that their sellers are legitimate their sellers can verify everything they have put onto their business and their business bank accounts so they have to make sure that everything absolutely everything matches up so we're going to type in our personal address and live more than three months we're going to find our company now i've used this as an example company but by now you should just click on search and you type in your company name and you should find it there straight away and then you click continue you will say that this is your trading address and click continue and again just like we did with setting up the business we have to choose the business category it doesn't pull the information straight away from government's website so you're just going to type in e-commerce uh, confirm the shareholders we will state that none of our uh, controlling persons are a US citizen because for tax purposes they do need to know that and we're going to type in the fact that we are UK tax residency only now the next thing we're going to have to do is put in yes we're an active nfe non-financial entity and this is the process that we have to go through this is all the declarations that we're going to have to tick the tax de declaration the platform terms bank account terms and so on once we typed it in, or effectively submitted the tax form then we will be taken to our account dashboard now if by any part of this you don't understand you may potentially get stuck or you may have found it confusing may Make sure to call Tide's helpline. They are very, very nice and they are supportive and they understand exactly what you're trying to set up and they'll be extremely helpful in setting up not only your business but also your business bank account. This is the primary reason why I chose to go with Tide as opposed to many of the other business bank accounts out there because they understand exactly where we're trying to do, what we're trying to get to, and they can be extremely helpful. And once that's done, we now guys have a business and a business bank account sorted the very next step we have to do once all of the information is gathered is set up an amazon seller account right guys so now with the business and the business bank account sorted we are now ready to open up our first amazon seller account now as mentioned before this is going to be a professional seller account which is why there's going to be 25 pounds 
plus VAT plus the selling fees. So initially to set up this account, you're going to have to pay 30 pounds. However, guys, do not worry. If you don't find the product within the first month or do not use their services and don't start selling on Amazon as quickly as you would have hoped, you can easily claim a refund for this 25 pounds. Once you click on to sign up and put in your details of your current account for Amazon or your, your personal Amazon seller account, then you will come into this page right here, okay? Where you will provide information around your business, about yourself, the billing, the store, and the verification part, okay? Now, the company registration number, this is very easy to get. This is the very first thing they're going to ask, and this is why we set up the business first. The company registration number can be easily found on the company's house um, when you put in your own company details, okay? So this is where you put that in. Next thing is you're going to have to receive a PIN via an SMS, and this is where you're actually going to have to type in your phone number and send the SMS and provide your primary contact information, okay? This is really, really important, guys, as well, because if anything goes wrong with your account, if Amazon needs to get in touch with you or anything happens at all, this is the number but they're going to be using. Once you have put in all of the business information, the next thing you need to do is put in information around yourself, you, the owner of this particular business. And you have to put in two things, the country of citizenship, i.e. where you're at at the moment, which in most cases will be us here in the UK, and also the country of birth. For, furthermore, you're gonna have to put in your date of birth as well, and your residential address at the moment, including the phone number. Also here, you're going to have to put in the beneficial owner of the business, or the legal representative of the business as well. And in this case, in most cases, you are going to be the beneficial owner of the business. So once you click on that, then you can click on save. Next up guys is really simple and that is your billing information. This is where you provide your business bank account details, okay? This is where the number comes in as well as your name and the, the information on the back of the card as to when this particular card expires, okay? This is what Tide should potentially send you in your post to get this information for you then to click next. Once you have put in the billing information, guys, the last thing you need to do is enter your store information, okay? And this is really, really important because in the very beginning, you're gonna to have to put in your store name. Now, there can be any store name whatsoever, guys, as long as it is not taken by another Amazon FBA seller. So make sure to have a think well and good what kind of name you want to call your store. The next thing is, do you have universal product codes, UPCs for all your products? This is where you have to click yes. And I will explain in further modules about barcodes and what exactly does this mean. However, each and every single one of your products will have a UPC code attached to it. Are you the manufacturer or brand owner for any of the products you want to sell on Amazon? The answer is yes. You will eventually be the brand owner and you're currently representative of the, of the manufacturer effectively from China. So here you click yes. And then the very last, do your own government registered trademark for the branded products you want to sell on Amazon? At the moment, it's going to be a no. However, guys, once you do eventually get your own trademark or you may already have a trademark, then you're going to have to click yes. And that's it guys. Then once you press next, it's going to take you to the verification page. And whilst your account is being verified, you can already use it given you will be billed £25 plus VAT. During the verification page, guys, you're going to need to provide your passport information, your business details, your um, national insurance number, and various other bits of information that is quite easily obtainable given the fact that now you have a business sorted out as well as your business bank account. Right guys, now that we have the business, the business bank account and the seller account sorted, the next thing we need to do is set up our product research software tools, okay? And in this case, I'm going to be recommending Helium 10 because it is by far the best tool out there, not just for product research, but also to help you manage your Amazon FBA business. And the way to do it is basically really, really simple and that is by signing up for free and then eventually choosing one of their plans. Now, you can easily start off with the starter pack at $37 a month and also with my coupon code uh, you will get 50% off of your first month 
or if you're going to be using this long term you can actually get 10% off each and every single month from the very beginning I will leave a link for that down below and in the very beginning given the fact that you are starting in my personal opinion the starter pack is more than enough because the main thing you're going to need initially is going to be their chrome extension which comes with each and every single one of these packs later down the line guys once you have more products running or potentially want to use some of their other tools such as email follow-ups such as tracking of products and various other things then you can go for the platinum package and this is exactly what I've been using over the last few years what's important guys is the fact that you do choose one of these softwares you may be thinking well I already have a product in mind I don't need this information I don't need to pay anything extra however guys believe me you do because you'd be surprised what you may think sells well doesn't actually sell well on Amazon at all you need to get concrete information you need to get the hard facts on what does well on Amazon and what doesn't to make sure that you make the right decision in making sure that the first product that you sell on Amazon the first product that you actually bring from China is a home run success so guys with that being said this should be a pretty straightforward um, lesson to be honest because it's pretty quick and easy to sign up you can trial out the free trial in the beginning just to play around with the software however if you're going to take this seriously you're going to have to choose one of these uh, packages and I personally would recommend going for the starter package at this very moment in time last thing you need to set up at this moment in time and the last thing we're going to cover in this module is of course going to be Alibaba now as mentioned before Alibaba is going to be where you're finding your products from China to ship over here into the UK and therefore sell them online this is where you will find your best possible products to sell at a cheap price okay and what you need to do is simply go on Alibaba type that into um, Google and this is the page that you're going to come across okay this is what it looks like now it is not as nice as Amazon It's not as it's a little bit more clunky as well however it gets the job done now I'm not going to go into too much detail as to how Alibaba works exactly but the registration process for it is extremely simple guys and you have to just type in sign in here and then this is the page that you're going to choose okay and it's really really simple just like with helium 10 um, extensions you type in where the country you're, uh, you're going to be selling in your email address and hopefully you will now have your business email address because Alibaba is notorious for sending you so many spammy emails your login password which hopefully you will remember confirm the password the company name as well this is your limited company that you have set up already again it must be a legally registered company by now and of course your full name by the time you are verified and you click here and agree to register you will be pretty much done the only thing you will have to do then is verify your email and you are good to go to start buying stuff online on Alibaba unlike the setting up of your businesses unlike the setting up of your business bank accounts and the Amazon seller accounts Alibaba is notoriously easy to set up and it should be no problem for you to start selling on Amazon and start sourcing products off Alibaba straight away finally now that everything has set up the business the business bank account Amazon seller account helium 10 and Alibaba the very next thing we need to do is move on to the most important part of this business model guys and that is product research now I can't stress this enough product research is by far the most important part and if you do this correctly you are very well on your way of making a successful Amazon FBA business otherwise guys if you don't do this properly if you do end up picking the wrong product no matter how much time and effort you put into every other part of this business it will be an uphill battle selling the wrong product in the wrong niche is going to be extremely difficult so therefore making sure that you paid enough attention on how to do product research correctly is extremely extremely important I always tell my students that product research is by far and I repeat by far the most important part of the business model whereas PPC advertising which is what we're going to come on later on in this tutorial is by far the hardest part of the business model and by far the hardest part to understand but for much more on that later on so the very first thing we need to do when it comes to product research is start getting some ideas okay now before we even look into our computer screen have a look around the house have a look when you go next time into your local supermarket 
for products that you may potentially source from China or potentially other um, countries and sell them online. Start looking for products that you know you are interested in that don't look too complicated, that are not too complex, maybe not electrical, not battery powered, products that don't have a very well known associated brand to it. So for example, you would never really want to get into the mobile phone business because there are already very well known brands established such as Apple, Samsung, Sony and so on and so forth. Also you wouldn't really want to go into the clothing business because Nike, Adidas and many other very well known brands have already that um, niche effectively under lockdown. However guys there are so many other niches that don't really have a very well known brand associated and those are the ones that we are going to pursue um, on Amazon FBA effectively. So the very first thing we need to do guys is start generating some product ideas. Now if we can't come across anything in our household, if we don't come across anything around the shops and so on, then we have to start doing a little bit more digging around the Amazon's marketplace in general. And one of the ways that I like to just start playing along is simply typing in random keywords and seeing what Amazon shows up. Okay, so for example, for this example, we're just going to type in yoga and put in a space and then we can actually see what is being searched on the Amazon's marketplace. We can straight away see that yoga mat, yoga block, yoga mats for women, socks, ball, all of these are being searched. What's interesting guys is Amazon will always suggest the top ranked or basically the search terms that are being searched the most at the very top. So straight away, without using any research tools whatsoever, I can see that out of yoga, yoga mat is by far the most searched. And then it follows with yoga block, yoga socks, and so on. Say we go, for example, for bicycle, okay? And straight away, it goes into bicycle, then bicycle pump, bicycle lights, bicycle lock, bicycle cover, and so on. And you can, these are straight away, guys. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine product ideas for you to look into further. Product idea generation should not be the difficult part. Doing the in-depth research, that is what's important, guys. That is what I'm looking for from you to make an Amazon FBA a successful business. So what we're going to do next is guys just go on to yoga mat because that is one of my favorite niches to look into as an example and what I want to do is I just want to have a look at some of the products that are selling now like I said before some of the things that I'm looking out for first things first is I'm looking out whether or not there are well-known brands in this niche is there a potential brand that is covering half of all of the products in this particular niche if there is then it's going to be extremely difficult for me to compare on. The next thing I'm looking for guys is, is it a battery powered product or is it an electrical powered product? Because the problem with those products guys in the very beginning when you're just starting out, you want to reduce the complexity as much as possible because the more complex the product is, the more problems you may potentially end up having. And you want to keep things as simple as possible, at least in the very beginning when you're just trying to learn the ropes, when you're just trying to learn exactly um, what you need to do to start off your Amazon FBA business and sell your very first product okay so and I'm just looking for ideas and I'm looking and I'm trying to see what exactly will catch my attention and I want to see also what is the price point of this particular niche is it something that I can potentially afford because at the end of the day if we're going to be buying products from China we need to make sure that we can afford these products in bulk that means we need to afford anything from 200 all the way up to 600 units and of course course I will explain that much more later down the line but what I'm trying to get at guys is that if you're running on a relatively low budget such as a thousand pounds maybe a thousand five hundred pounds then you may want to stay away from the more expensive niches such as a yoga mat but because the chances are if the yoga mat on Amazon is quite expensive i.e. as you can see it's 12 pounds 20 pounds 30 pounds then chances are when you go on to a Chinese Alibaba website it will be quite expensive as well and the more expensive the product is essentially the more money you have to um, pay up front and the more risk you are holding in the very beginning okay so 
Also, onto product research effectively, what I also like to use, guys, is Black Box. Now, this is one of the best Helium 10 product research tools out there. If I'm really struggling with product research ideas, what I want to do is I want to use this tool, put in quite a few criteria that are important to me, and then Amazon, uh, basically Helium 10, will spit out all of the products that match that criteria, and that will really help me narrow down potential ideas for me to look into further. Okay, so let's Let's just see how to use it. And basically, once you've signed up to Helium 10, to reach Black Box, you just go onto the Product Research column and put in Black Box. There are many, many other very, very useful tools that Helium 10 provides when it comes to Amazon FBA, but Black Box is probably one of my favorites. So when we come on here, the very first thing we need to do, guys, is click onto Categories. Now, I don't want you to select all of them because then it will get confusing, it will get messy, and it will start sending you way too many products choose one category at a time okay so for this example I will use potentially the keyword probably the niche let's go with beauty or oh, sorry baby products beauty baby products toys and games sports and outdoors uh, kitchen bathroom all of these niches are extremely good um, for you to to get into because there are so many categories or so many sub niches in those categories that actually don't have very well-known brand this is definitely something that you need to look out for the next thing we want to do is check the monthly revenue now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm looking for products that are making at least a thousand pounds each and every single month I not looking for products that are on Amazon's marketplace and don't sell anything whatsoever. I want to make sure that these products are making at least some sort of revenue. Now, unfortunately, we can't put in the monthly uh, profit because of course that is far more important to us because we don't actually know how much those products cost to those sellers so we're just going to end, end up going with the monthly revenue and that is the figure that i usually like to go with and i always leave the max um completely blank because if it sells fifty thousand units each and every single month that is really really good the next thing i want to do is look at price now this guys will all depend on how much your budget you have and how much risk you are willing to take if you are starting on a relatively lower budget, which chances are majority of you will be, anything from 500 to 2,000 pounds, I would suggest putting the price anything between 5 to 15 pounds. If you're going up the higher end, if your budget is three to five thousand pounds, then maybe you want to push it up to twenty-five pounds. Remember, guys, the higher the price of the product, the more you're going to have to pay up front to Alibaba, which we'll get onto later down the line. And the more you have to pay up front, the higher risk you're willing to take. And in my personal opinion, guys, when it comes to just starting off your own Amazon FBA business, it's all about education and experience in the very beginning. The profits will come. What we're trying to do here is take the least amount of risk and make the most amount of money possible. So we're going to keep the price from five to 15 pounds. Moving on to the next guys, review count. Now review count is important because the higher the review count, the more um, basically validation these products have had. If you come across a product that's got thousands of reviews, then thousands of people have bought the product and given their opinion on what they think. And that does play into the customer's minds because they have that validation from other customers. If other customers say that this product is good, that means they are much more likely to buy from that listing because other people have said it's good an unbiased opinion therefore i want to keep this to a maximum of 50 and that means that not that many customers have bought this product and reviewed it this is make this make sure effectively that um the products that i'm just about to come across in the baby product niche are going to be relatively new with not that many reviews just yet and then the review rating we're going to leave it blank so just to recap guys as of right now, I'm looking into the baby products niche. I'm looking for the monthly revenue to be at least a thousand pounds or over. The price has to be between five to 15 pounds because we want to try and minimize the risk as much as possible. And the review count has to be 50 reviews or under. And we're gonna click on search. Now, 
within a very few seconds straight away we will see that it already produces over 200 product found okay that means there's 200 potential product ideas for you to look through okay and now we're going to go through in-depth product research on each and every single one of these products some of these will be unviable straight away whilst others will pique my interest right off the bat and the very first thing I'm looking at is potential the complexity of the product just like I said earlier here we have a portable diaper caddy diaper caddy organizer bag effectively and it's nine pounds ninety nine which definitely fits the criteria the monthly revenue is over a thousand pounds which definitely meets the criteria and the reviews are 32 reviews and majority of them are five stars at the moment all of this looks great so let's use that as an example what I want to do now is simply copy the diaper caddy bag or basically caddy organizer effectively I'm going to go back into Amazon and then I'm going to put that into the search bar because I want to see not just that product but I want to see the whole niche as a whole I want to see what people are selling at the moment what the average price is and if they're most importantly is there enough demand for me to get into and introduce something new okay so the next thing we need to do when it comes to product research is actually use the helium tens chrome extension now this guys is really really important for you to have and this is why I always recommend getting helium 10 because the amount of software and the amount of information that they will provide you will help you make the right decision when it comes to which product you need to start selling on Amazon FBA because if you go about making the wrong decision or if you have the information that's not correct potentially it doesn't spit out the right figures um, and it's providing you know much much higher demand than what the reality is then you will be on destiny potentially your destiny is going to be to fail so you really want to make sure that the product the research tool that you use is a great product research tool that provides you with the most accurate information because this is our money we're talking about this is something serious that we really need to take into account so now let me explain exactly what does the helium 10 extension tool show me and what exactly am i looking at this shows me all of the revenue and what exactly each and every single product is doing on the marketplace what's their revenue what are their fees how many sales have they made over the last month and so on this guys is really 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 important and it is essential for you to do this product research tool to make sure that you pick the right product so let's go through the very top the very first thing I'm interested in is the total revenue the total revenue for this product as of right now is hundred and seventy two thousand pounds now that may sound like a lot guys but given the fact that Amazon has got thousands if not hundreds of thousands of sellers a lot of them are making quite a good chunk of money and therefore a total revenue of hundred seventy two thousand is not bad but it's also not great my personal criteria is anything over a hundred thousand pounds is uh, is plus is a bonus effectively anything under a hundred thousand pounds means that there is just simply not enough revenue there is not enough demand for that particular niche the next thing I'm looking at is the average price anything under 15 pounds is good especially if I'm a new seller and I want to reduce my risk as much as possible and as you can see here the average price is around 14 pounds and this makes sense because as you can see some of the products here are at 17.99 some of them are at 12.99 8.99 and so on and the average around all of these products is 14 which marks the criteria once again perfectly and last but not least I want to check the average reviews 580 is relatively a lot that means a lot of these products in this niche has been around for quite some time guys because the average to get an average reviews of 580 means that quite a few of these products have been selling for a while okay now that could be seen as a positive and also it can be seen as a negative it can be seen as a negative because these products have been established they have got the review score up they have been selling for quite some time customers know exactly what they are getting once they buy the product the positive on the other side guys is the fact that these products have been around for quite some time there may not be that many new innovative updated products in the marketplace over the last few months or years that for means you should always take average reviews with a pinch of salt guys it's a good guideline to see how old these listings 
things are but it should not discourage you if you see a very very high number here because it simply means that some of these products have been around for quite some time what i also like to do guys is i always like to sort it by revenue and see which products are making the most amount of money and i then want to see if any of the products on the first page have a relatively low review count because if they have a low review count that means that pre products that have been only around for a few months have already managed to get onto the first page so any products that are under 100 reviews is definitely a bonus and as you can see already here there is a product with 45 review count and is making four thousand pounds which is great another one with 32 reviews is making three thousand pounds 28 reviews is making 2.6 thousand pounds so there is definitely a chance and a possibility for you to bring out a brand new product with a relatively low review score in the very beginning with lack of sales you won't get many reviews and you will see good um uh, revenue figures that is very very encouraging and it's a very very good sign on the other hand guys if I'm looking at all of these products and all of their review counts are in the hundreds if not thousands then that is potentially a red flag okay the next thing I'm looking at guys is going back onto the revenue I want to click on some of these products and I want to see exactly why are they selling so well why is their revenue over ten thousand pounds anything over ten thousand pounds being sold each and every single month is amazing guys just think about it if you just had one of these products sell over ten thousand pounds each and every single month you are on track to make a hundred and twenty thousand pounds in revenue off just one product one product really can change your life and really make an impact for your financial future so you really have to keep this in mind but what i'm looking at here right now is i want to do research as to why these products are doing so well what is it about their listing what is it about their images what is it about their price what is it about the actual product itself why are people keep coming back and buying from this particular listing and what I'm looking at first of all is the images okay I want to see uh, why what what's so special about these images why is it so good now what I don't like to use is the listing health score this will tell you that is great at 9.86 but remember guys any of these softwares including helium 10 will only use the algorithms to spit out a figure don't use that algorithm as a B all end all figure effectively you really need to use your common sense and see for yourself as to why you think this listing is doing so well and from my opinion this listing is relatively good okay it shows exactly what the product is and what it comes with what also is nice is that they actually provide an ebook as well on baby parenting and nutrition given the nature of this product most people buying this product will have relatively small children and so on so having an ebook will definitely be an added benefit and potentially something that you may to want to look into yourself the next product image also shows exactly the benefits of this particular product how many pockets it has the strong hook and loop and the durability of the product effectively and what I also like is when I actually look on this particular image it is actually a zoomable image but not of the highest quality so something that definitely we could potentially improve on what I'm looking at here guys by looking at the images is is there anything that I could potentially do better is there anything that I could potentially improve on and quite frankly I believe so I can because these images are great but they're not the best I could definitely make much much better um, watermarks much better imagery much better explanation as to why somebody should buy from me as opposed to somebody else so given the fact that this nappy caddy is selling over 20,000 pounds each and every single month with relatively okay not bad images is definitely an encouraging figure if you come across a listing that looks perfect every part of it looks perfect the images the title the key features and there is nothing that you could potentially improve on then that is a problem because effectively um, you know you don't exactly know what you can do better and if you can't improve on the potential um, product there's nothing you can do so the next thing we need to do is look at the title now the title the main purpose of the title and this is why it's so important to watch a tutorial from 2022 is that things on Amazon change all the time guys okay 
things on Amazon change so frequently that you always have to be on the lookout. What's the latest trend? What exactly has changed? What has exactly has been updated? Back in 2018, 2017, the title always used to be used for SEO purposes. You want to really keyword stuff as much as possible to make sure that your product appears on as many products as possible. So these titles always used to be extremely long, just like this one right now, with many keywords that don't really are necessary and don't explain what the product is uh, and so on. So for example, designed to accommodate all nursery essentials. If somebody types in accommodate just on its own, they probably won't be looking for a nappy caddy. So as a result of this, guys, in 2022, when it comes to a title, you really want to keep a relatively short title that describes exactly what the product is. Because the truth is, SEO no longer depends on the title. What Amazon now does, and it's so clever, that the algorithm will actually look at the images, it will scan the images, and it will de determine straight away, without you saying anything, what product are you selling. So even if it, this is a nappy caddy in the images, but let's say you type in bicycle yoga mat or whatever in the title, it will still be showing up for nappy caddies because that's what Amazon's algorithm is telling them. Therefore, guys, remember the title is primarily used to sell the product and to explain exactly what you have. So in this case, if I was recommending what changes this seller should be making, in my personal opinion, they should definitely be um, cutting out a lot of the non-essential keywords in this title to make it look as attractive and as straightforward as possible. The next thing I'm looking at, guys, is the key features. This is where you really want to explain much more detail about your product. Why should somebody be buying from you as opposed to somebody else? What's so great about your product? And here you can see that the seller is trying to explain that the product is lightweight, it's convenient, it's got an organ ergonomical handle, large capacity, and so on and so forth. But the, again, the key features don't really pop to me. There are no images, there are no little HTML codes. It doesn't, it's quite difficult to read. And I will probably go on a limb and say that most of the customers that buy from this product, buy from this listing, don't read this in great detail. They may read the very first bullet point, but actually keeping your attention span is really difficult after reading all of these five key features. Remember guys, our attention span is getting smaller and smaller. People are making their purchasing decision primarily on the images. Therefore, making sure that your images are done as best that they can possibly is extremely important. If there is one thing I can tell you from this module of product research is when it comes to making your image, make sure that the image is as good as it can possibly be. And we will speak about this later on down the line. The next thing I need to look at is of course the reviews. What are people talking about in this product? But what's important guys here is actually not the positive reviews, but the negative reviews. I want to know exactly what people are complaining about what could I potentially improve on? So I'm going to click on the one and the two star reviews and see exactly what they are saying because the more information I get, the better. I want to understand exactly what people are saying that is so bad about this product. And quite frankly, given the fact that it only has one one star review is not a great sign. That means that this product is relatively good quality and out of all of the reviews that they have, they only have one poor review, which is which is really tough for you to potentially improve on. And as you can see, it says very poor quality, not sturdy at all, especially when filled with items. I bought this as a gift for my pregnant cousin, but I have to have get another one instead of this as it was such poor quality. So what I get from this is when I'm speaking to my suppliers on Alibaba, I want to make sure to double check on the quality, what the product is made from, what exactly material is it coming from, can the, the supplier provide me with images? Can the supplier provide me with some videos uh, of the product potentially being filled with items and so on? Is it, does it, is it flimsy? Is it sturdy and so on? I really want to make sure to double check and it may be a good idea for you to actually order a sample from China so you can do all of these checks yourself. The last thing you want to do guys is get 500 products from China, bring them over to your house and then realize that the product quality is nowhere near to the standard that you want it to be at. And that is just a recipe for disaster. But because when you send those products to the Amazon's FBA warehouse and they actually start selling,
selling, these reviews will start to pile up very, very quickly. Now here guys, coming back onto the listing, if this particular listing had more poor reviews, that will actually be a good sign because that means that this listing, people are buying tremendous amount of uh, units each and every single month even though there are issues potentially with the quality with the item and so on the fact that it only has a one star one review that is not great because that means it is satisfying majority of the customers and the last thing on the product research module that i wanted to explain is the importance of google trends guys now if you have never used google trends this is a really really powerful tool to search what exactly are people talking about and what are they searching on Google now you may be thinking what does Google have to do with Amazon well matter of fact it has a lot to do with Amazon because it shows us exactly which products are trending and which products has a relatively stable demand throughout the whole year so for example if we put in nappy caddy let's see if it is actually actually a trendy product is there a fluctuation in demand throughout the year or is it a relatively, I just misspelled caddy, uh, or is it a relatively stable product, okay? So what I want to do is I want to put United Kingdom and then I want to do in the past five years. And what I want to see is that, is there a certain points where the demand is far higher than the rest of the year? And as I can see right now, for some odd reason, in February in 2022, there has been a massive influx of nappy caddies and we are not sure why, but that explains such good figures when it comes to Helium 10. That is the reason why the demand, the revenue for the last 30 days of all nappy caddies were on over £170,000. This is really, really important for you to know. That being said, guys, this is relatively non-trendy product because the demand overall has been relatively stable. To show you an idea of what a trendy product looks like, let's put in sunglasses and see what the difference is, okay? you will straight away notice that there is a massive wave in demand up and then it comes crashing down in September, October. For the reasons because all of a sudden there is less sun, it's no longer summer and therefore people are going to be buying sunglasses a lot less. Therefore, the last thing you want to do is potentially go into the sunglasses niche, buy products from China on sunglasses and get them delivered around September, October time because you know that demand for these products is going to be severely impacted and will only start picking up back around April time okay I'm not saying that Google Trends or potentially you shouldn't be looking at trendy products what I am saying is you need to be aware of these trends and making sure that if you're going to go for the trendy product start making sure that you have this product in stock on the way up and not on the way down. The products that are extremely trended that I would potentially say try and stay away from are the ones that are really um, you know, dependent on certain time of the year and it does not sell at all for the rest of the year. Take for example, Christmas jumper. As you can see, this is going to be an extremely trendy product. And if for whatever reason, if there is a supply chain issue, if the products do not come in time and you end up getting 500 Christmas jumpers after Christmas, you are doomed, okay? Because you will not be selling any of those products right up until next year's Christmas. So you gotta be really, really careful when it comes to trends and making sure you are aware of it is crucial and with that being said guys let's move on to the next part of this business model so guys now that we found the product that we want to find sell on Amazon FBA the very next thing we need to do is potentially find a supplier that will supply us with these products from China bring them over to the UK marketplace and essentially allow us to sell them online now Alibaba by far is the best uh, tool effectively or by far the best piece of software that I always have used to source my products from China into the UK. Alibaba kind of is like Amazon on in China and it is used primarily by suppliers and trading companies to advertise their products to people all over the world and this is what I have been using to run my Amazon FBA business over the last few years. That being said Alibaba is not the only one that would potentially allow you to buy, buy products all across the world but that is the platform that I've been using and is the one that we're going to be speaking about the most. Now, what I also like about 
Alibaba, just like with Amazon guys, is the fact that if you are unhappy with the product, if you are not happy with the quality, if you're not happy with the service, you are eligible for a full refund. Now I myself have been selling for over four years now and I have requested a refund twice and both times they were um, basically allowed to provide me with a full refund and that did not have many issues. Now you can potentially directly speak to some of these suppliers yourself. You could potentially look into other countries such as India, Pakistan, Taiwan, Thailand and so on. However, the problem is, is that you are always unsure what will happen once you make the payment. Whereas with Alibaba, if you do make the payment, you are 100% certain that you will be either getting the product that you have ordered or making sure that you get your money back if anything happens. And therefore, you can easily pay the money up front without any stress whatsoever. So when it comes to Alibaba, there are a couple of things that I want you guys to know. First things first, I want to make sure that you are searching for products, okay? And you de definitely straight away type in the product that you are looking to buy from China. The next thing, guys, is we're going to look here on the side. The very first thing I want you guys to do is always put in the trade assurance supplier types. This basically means, guys, is that Alibaba has assured that this particular supplier that you're looking through is verified and has agreed to provide you with a refund if anything goes wrong. If you don't tick these two boxes, then you may come across some shady suppliers who have ghost accounts on Alibaba, and once they take your money, they will simply close down and nothing will ever come out of it. So you really want to make sure that all of the suppliers you speak to are verified and you're 100% certain that you are in safe hands. The next thing I want you guys to do is start looking around through products. Now in this case, I've used the example of a yoga mat and what I'm interested in is to have a variety of different types of products to speak to suppliers about. I always make sure that myself and a lot of my students, sorry, let me rephrase that, all of my students speak to as many different suppliers as possible because the more suppliers you speak to, the more options you have available and the more bargaining power you always have as well. Because when it comes to negotiations down the line, you will always be able to say to one supplier, hey, I like your product, I like your service. However, another supplier is providing me something with a little bit cheaper. Can you match this price and therefore I will go with you? If you only end up speaking to one supplier, you are effectively putting all of your your eggs in one basket and if something doesn't work out if something goes wrong you are literally back to square one so what I want you to do guys now is to look through these pages and effectively choose different types of products that you find quite interesting and just put them into the compare basket okay we'll compare this one this one looks a little bit different from that one so we're going to compare that one as well we're going to look at this one It's quite nice packaging as well and it's relatively new in 2021 with a logo and when I'm just looking for different types of products that are made from different material, maybe different colors, different designs, and so on. Most importantly, I'm always looking for products that I may not potentially be able to find on my marketplace at the moment. So I may potentially look at this product, which is a relatively nice design, premium quality linen natural rubber yoga mat, and I may be interested in seeing whether or not these products are currently for sale on Amazon.co.uk. If they're not, then I may be the very first seller to introduce this product and I may be able to differentiate myself from the rest of the competition. Think about it. There are thousands upon thousands of products being sold on Amazon each and every single day. A lot of them looking very, very similar to one another. And if you can come across something different, something unique, something special, then you definitely have a very, very good chance of making a lot of sales on Amazon. So once I have quite a few suppliers chosen, and like I said, guys, you really need to speak to at least 20 to 40 suppliers suppliers to get the best possible price, I want to then contact supplier. Now, once I go onto the contact supplier side, what I want to do then is go all the way to the bottom and I want to type in my detailed requirements. You don't have to go one by one. You simply have to type in a generic message and send the inquiry. Okay. Now, the key here, guys, is to keep it as simple as possible. Remember, these suppliers, 
English is not their first language. And if you put in too much text, if you put in too many difficult words for them to understand, they will sometimes ignore your message or sometimes not give you the response that you're looking at. So remember, imagine you are speaking to a child. Imagine you are speaking to a 10 year old and you really want to dumb it down as much as possible. You want to give them the very vital information that you need to make a purchasing decision. Once they have responded with the information that you want, then you can move on to more questions, etc. depending on how good their level of English is and so on. So let me just go through some of the things that I would potentially ask in the very first message. Hi, I wouldn't say I hope you're well. Um, we are looking to buy 1000 units of your yoga mat. Could you please answer the following? Okay, now what I'm doing here is a couple of things, guys, and this is really, really important for you to go to know. First of all, realize that, that I'm not introducing myself. I'm not telling them I'm a big business. I'm not telling them I'm going to sell on Amazon. I'm not giving them much information at all. What I'm giving them is basically exactly what I want from them. The idea here, guys, is to provide them with the least amount of information and to continuously ask questions. You don't need to tell 40 different suppliers that you're looking to buy this particular yoga mat and sell it on Amazon. You don't want to give them an idea how much demand there is for their products for Amazon sellers. You really want to limit the amount of information that they get to work with and ask for them for a lot in return. The next thing I'm doing is asking for a thousand units. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't want a thousand. I want a couple of hundred units just to start off with. I can't even afford a thousand units. But the truth is, guys, by putting a bigger number up front, it piques their interest that much more. There is no reason for you potentially not to reduce your order later down the line once you have had a conversation with them. But in the very beginning, to ensure that they respond to you and to ensure that they give you a decent price, then make sure to put in a higher amount in the very beginning. The truth is, if the product is for a thousand units and it's five dollars, then it should be five dollars even if you end up ordering 500 units later down the line. The next thing I want to do is ask them a question. What is the price per unit? Okay, this will give us an idea exactly how much they're charging for each and every single product. But remember, this is just price per unit. It does not include the shipping price. The second question is, what is the shipping price uh, for a thousand units? Okay, now this will depend on whether or not you're going to go via air shipping or via sea. If you're going to go via air shipping, that means that your product will simply be shipped via air. Now, the beautiful thing about air shipping is that it's quick, it is reliable, and it allows you to start selling that product within a couple of weeks' time. The problem with air shipping, guys, is that it is very, very expensive. And if you're going to order a product that requires a lot of space and takes up a lot of um, and is quite heavy, then you may be result into sea shipping, which is much slower but much cheaper. Therefore, my rule of thumb, guys, is that if if you're going to use air shipping, then the total weight of your cargo should not be more than 100 kilos. If it's over 100 kilos, then you're going to have to go with sea shipping. And in this case, I want to find out what is the shipping per 1000 units via air and via sea, just so I can compare the difference. So air and via sea. Okay, and then they should give us a quotation. What is the difference in terms of shipping? So therefore, I can make a decision on whether or not I should be buying it via air or via sea. In this case, chances are I will most likely be buying it via sea because via air, it will just be crazy expensive. And the last question I want to ask is, um, the address is, is, you know, your home address effectively. How quickly could you send the products out? What is the lead time? Okay, what does that mean, guys? That is a very, very simple question. What I'm asking here is I'm providing them with my address, potentially my home address or whatever, so they can calculate the shipping prices accurately. And more importantly, I want to find out, do they have these products readily available? If I happen to order a thousand units or 500 units or whatever, can they send those products the next day? Or will they take 30 to 60 days to produce the product and then send them out? And then you have to wait another 
two to three months potentially for, to receive that product. Remember guys, if you're going to buy a product and it's C-shipped and it's not even produced at the moment, you can very easily end up waiting five, four to five months effectively to eventually end up selling that product on Amazon. Therefore, figuring out whether or not this particular product is available as of right now is extremely important. And that is what I mean by the lead time. The lead time effectively means guys, how long will it take from you getting the money to you sending the product to me? Usually, best case scenario will be anything from three to five days. And that's it. That is it. I will not provide any more information and I just want to see what exactly they will say. Some of them will be responding straight away whilst others completely will ignore that message. And therefore, just like I said in the beginning, if you're going to message 40 suppliers, the chances are half of them will ignore you because they get these requests each and every single day and they may not take you seriously or maybe lazy, whatever. You narrow that down to 20 suppliers. Out of the 20 suppliers, you may get 10 of them who are wasting your time providing you with ridiculous prices that there is no reason for you to negotiate on whatsoever. And then out of the 10 suppliers that are left, then you can start going into detail and trying to get more information about the product you're about to buy and potentially start negotiating with them um, to get the best possible price so you can start selling on Amazon as quickly as possible. And with that being said, guys, let's move on to the next part. Right, guys, so the next part of the business that we have to discuss is creating your very first listing on Amazon FBA. By now, you should have already set everything up. You have done your product research, you have spoken to suppliers, and now you're at a part where you have to create your listing, your very first listing on Amazon FBA. But before we get to that, we need to speak about getting the barcodes. Now, what do I mean by that? Getting the barcodes is extremely important, guys, because this is how Amazon is going to differentiate your product from the thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sellers on the marketplace. How are they going to know that your yoga mat belongs to you as opposed to somebody else? And this is where the recency of this tutorial is extremely important because once again, this has changed numerous times over the last few years. Back in 2017, you can go onto a third party website, buy some barcodes that somebody else owns and use them as your own. Now, in 2022, things have changed. Amazon have their own checks and balances in place to make sure that the barcodes that you have are original and they belong to you guys. And the way to get these barcodes is by going to gs1.co.uk website. This is the official governing body for not just Amazon, but pretty much every single company that ends up selling products um, in the country effectively. And as you can see here, it says, join the 2 million companies using GS1 barcodes barcodes to sell on Amazon, eBay, Tesco's, Google and other marketplaces as well. And as you can scroll down here, you can see the different companies that are using their barcodes. And it is extremely important, guys. When you buy these barcodes, effectively, you will understand that these barcodes now belong to you. Nobody else can use them. And you will actually get an official certificate stating that these barcodes that you have belong to you and nobody else. And this is extremely important, guys, because if you use one of the other tutorials, if you end up buying a third party barcode that doesn't actually belong to you, it could put not only your listing in potential issues, but potentially even your account as well. Therefore, getting the original barcodes is extremely important. Now, in my personal opinion, if you're just starting out, I genuinely believe you only need to 10 barcodes. You really want to keep your costs down as much as possible. And going for the starter 10 is the way to go in my personal opinion. And as you can see, as of right now, it is 50 pounds per year, excluding VAT. So with VAT, it will be around 60 pounds per year. Now, remember guys, it is one barcode per product. Okay, so if you have 10 barcodes, that means essentially you can sell up to 10 different products. Now, if that product has 1000 units, 500 units, 200 units, it doesn't really matter. It is still only needs one barcode. However, guys, if you end up selling a yoga mat in green, in blue, in red, then that essentially are three different products and therefore they will need three different barcodes. It is extremely important to understand the difference between barcodes, units and products, okay? So just to recap, guys, one barcode, 
per product, okay? Regardless of how many units that product has. Once the barcodes have been bought, you will get essentially a PDF file or you can go onto the dashboard on this website here and you will simply have to the, the 10 barcodes there for you simply to copy and paste onto Amazon's website. And with that being said now, let's move back onto Amazon. So, the way to add your first product on Amazon's marketplace is you go into catalog and you click on add products here. Okay. Now, instead of going onto here or anything like that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on, I'm adding a product that is not sold on Amazon. Okay. We're going to go basically and bring out a brand new product of our own. Instead of jumping onto somebody else's listing and essentially selling somebody else's product, we are going to create our own listing with our own images, with our own title key features and so on so we're going to click on right here and that will take us to this page where we have to select the product type now we have two options we can either select the product type by searching through browsing effectively or we can just type in and let Amazon determine which category we potentially may fit in and for this example I'm just going to use this because it's much much quicker and easier so I'm just gonna type in yoga mat and see which categories does that allow me to get into and as you can see it is in the exercise mat and you can either go sports and outdoors fitness yoga mats or sports and outdoors fitness accessories and exercise mats. Personally, given that this particular category has the word yoga in it, and if I'm trying to sell yoga mats, I'm probably going to go for this very first option right here. Now, once that is done, guys, this is where everything happens. This is where we have to put in all of the details in regards to our product. And this is extremely important. Now, in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to explain exactly what needs to be put in in each and every single field. And then later on, we're going to speak a little bit more about optimizing and making sure that our product appears on as many first pages as possible because that guys is crucial if you don't appear on the first page you can say goodbye to your listing because nobody will ever find you okay and it is really really important so with that being said let's get straight to it so the very first thing we have to answer is does the product have variations is it a yes or a no to keep this tutorial as simple as possible we're going to go with no the next part we have to do is we have to say the product ID and this is where the GS1 barcodes come in. But in this case, it doesn't actually say GS1. We have to use UPC and we have to copy and paste the barcode that we have from the GS1 website onto here. And as you can see, it already says the validity of the product ID is checked against GS1, GEPIR and ISBN org databases. So they straight away will see whether or not that particular code that you typed in belongs to you if not they may result in removal of your product creation privileges therefore they take this very very seriously they do not want malicious sellers potentially ghost sellers selling fake items they want everybody on their marketplace to sell original items okay so this is where you type in your product ID the next part guys is your product name now this used to be called the title but now they call it product name and that is a very very distinct difference and this is what goes back to the original part where we were speaking about a potential listing where you actually have to title the product and give them exactly customers let them know exactly what they are buying you no longer need to keyword stuff this part of the title okay so instead of that you just type in yoga mat and that's pretty much it really yoga so in my opinion you would be yoga mat um, exercise mat uh, for gym or something else we will come back to it again but like I said it should not be more than a hundred characters and is this product expirable we're going to go with no okay next part variations we're going to leave this blank because we're not going to go for a variation type products. Like I said, I have had many other videos explaining why exactly you shouldn't go for variations in the very beginning. So we're going to leave this blank for now. Next up, offer. Now, there are quite a few important fields for you to put in here. Now, the first one is seller SKU. If this is the very first time you're creating a listing, leave this blank, okay? Now, the important part is, guys, out of everything we're about to type up, everything can be changed and i mean everything 
except for the seller SKU. So if you're just starting out, make sure to just leave that blank, okay? Next up, your price. You just have to type in your price here. So we're gonna go for 599, country of origin. In some cases, it will be China. In some cases, it may be UK or whatever. Condition always has to be new. And here we have to choose the fulfillment channel. Whether or not we're going to merchant fulfill, i.e. ship the products ourselves, therefore when an order comes in, we see the address of the order, we print off the package labeling, we stick it onto the package, we pick and pack and send it off to the post office ourselves, or we will let Amazon do everything for us. So where it will allow us to dispatch and provide customer service as well. Now, the key here is guys, if you click on, I will ship the item myself, then you can essentially make the product listing live, active online straight away where customers can search and see it. If you choose this option, which is what I recommend for all of my students who want to scale up their business, given that a lot of the hard work actually gets taken away from them and done by Amazon, you then will be out of stock until the products actually come into the Amazon's FBA warehouse, gets checked in and therefore gets put away by Amazon's warehouse workers, okay? So this is really, really important. And that's pretty much it. Now, it all still shows vital information as this exclamation mark because I haven't put in a barcode here, okay? So so it will, you will, whatever you do, okay, you want to make sure that you don't have any of these exclamation marks. And then once you type that in, you simply click save and finish. But what I also want to show you before we move on to the next part is click onto more attributes, okay? And I just want to show you the other important parts that you need to focus on putting in, okay? And that is your um, images. Of course, this is very, very important. Like I said, in the very beginning, you can save without it, but make sure to put a lot of attention and effort into sending and uploading the best possible images for your listing. You can also check the guidelines, especially as well, to make sure um, what are the image guidelines here. I think you can see that here. As you can see, the products must fill 85% of the image. They have to be at least a thousand pixels and JPEG is their preferred image format. Now, if you are not an expert on images, you may want to look into fiverr.com to get somebody to help you. They also will have to make sure they don't have any props, any logos, watermarks, or anything at all. The main image, guys, remember, has to be on the pure white background, okay? And it cannot be a drawing. All of these things is extremely important because majority of the customers that will be buying your product will all depend on how good your images are. So I cannot stress enough the importance of this uh, this feature effectively of the product listing. The next part, guys, is the description. Now, the, the part of the description that's really, really important is for you to type in the key product features. These are the key product features that you see by, by the image side, okay? Usually, it's on the right-hand side, and usually, most sellers will have like five key product features that will explain what the product is, how good the product is, what are the key features of the product, and why should they be buying from you as opposed to somebody else. So, in my personal opinion, you should have five key features right here. And most importantly, make sure to always use some of the search terms that customers would use to find your product. So if I'm about to sell a yoga mat, I would use various different variations of yoga mat, gym mat, exercise mat, and type these into these key product features. So when I'm explaining the product, I'm using different types of words. So therefore Amazon's algorithm will understand that I'm selling all of these products that can be named in different ways. It is really, really important to take this seriously as well, to give yourself the best possible chance to be on the first page. I can't stress this enough, guys. If you don't end being on the first page and you're stuck on second, third, fourth page, your, your sales will be severely impacted because think about it from a customer's perspective. How many of you ever go to the second, third, fourth page? Most of the chances you will make the purchasing decision on the very first page and then move on. And then the very last bit I wanted to show you guys is the keyword section. This is where you literally tell Amazon exactly what you want to be searched for. This is where you type in all of the search terms that you want to be searched for on Amazon and nothing else. Now, as you can see, they don't want to, you to repeat yourself. They don't want you to put in ASINs. You don't want to put any brand names or competitors. So literally, I would just do yoga, mats, exercise, okay? I would... Uh, I would 
basically put Matt again, but given that I can't repeat myself, I would use Matt, then I would say gym, then I would say um, exercises, and various other search terms that potentially people would use to find that product. And this can be filled up to as much as you want effectively, I think up to 250 characters, and this will not be seen by the customer. So it doesn't really have to make too much sense effectively. You just want to provide as many relevant search terms as possible to give your listing as best of a possible chance as possible. And with that being said, guys, let's move on to the next part. Right guys, so on the next part, what we're going to do is go through how exactly do you create your first shipping plan? This is what essentially you have to do to make sure that the products that you now have at your household basically get sent to the Amazon's FBA warehouse correctly. It gets checked in on time and therefore it becomes live as quickly as possible. So currently we are on the manage inventory page and we have to go on this little arrow here next to the product that we want to send off. And then we have to click on to send and replenish inventory. Once you've clicked on that, you will come to this page right here. Okay. And here you have to do a couple of things. Number one, you have to make sure to provide the address that you're shipping the products from. That could be your storage facility. That could be potentially your own home, whatever. The next thing you have to do is come down here and you have to put in the prep and labeling details needed. Okay. This is where you have to tell Amazon what kind of preparation do you need them to do for you. Now they can potentially prep it for different types of products, but chances are in most cases, these will be already prepped by your Chinese supplier. And in most cases, at least from my personal experience, you simply have to put in no prep needed and click save. Okay. The next up, you then have to say who labels the products. So that means basically who is responsible for typing or for sticking on the barcodes um, that you have printed, whether or not you want Amazon to do it or whether or not you're going to do it yourself or your Chinese supplier. Now, in most cases, I personally advise my all of my students to save on costs as much as possible, because if you choose Amazon, they will charge you 15 P per every single barcode stuck onto the product. However, if you label the product yourself, you get to save on that money. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot. 15p is sounds like a drop in the bucket. However, if you are about to send off a thousand units, that essentially is 150 pounds or actually 15 pounds if math serves me right. But basically, it is money that it can be very easily saved. So in my personal opinion, what I would suggest and for all of my students is to select the buy seller and therefore either label them yourself or get your your supply to do it for you. The next part we have to do is put in the ASIN's weight. This is the product's dimensions, okay? So for this example, I'm just going to put 10, 10, 10, and then 0.2 or whatever. But when it comes to you doing your own product, it is really, really important for you to put this all correctly. Now, when the product does come into the Amazon's FBA warehouse, it will get remeasured, it will get weighed, and therefore correct information will be typed up. However, it was very, very important for you to put all of this correctly because because this will determine what kind of fulfillment fees will you be paying for every single item sold. Okay. Next up, we have to click on save. Okay. Once that is done and the prep is now no longer required, what we then have to do is create a new case pack template. Okay. So this is where we will tell Amazon what kind of products were coming. So testing here. So template name, we will tell them in each box, how many units will be sent off. So in this case, we'll say 50 units in each and every single box that comes in and then the product dimension. So we're going to do 50, 50, 50, let's say. And the box weight is going to be 10 kilos and we're going to click save and continue. Okay. And then we should have this already here. And then we can put in how many boxes do we want to send to Amazon. And given there are 50 units in each box, let's say we're going to send two boxes and then we'll click on ready to send. Once that is done, we then have to move and then click on confirm and continue. Once that is validated, basically Amazon will allow you to then send the products. They will tell you what is the shipping date. They will ask you effectively when you are planning to ship this uh, product out effectively. And then it will give you a potentially estimation of the costs as to how much you should be paying to UPS to send that product out effectively. Okay. And in this case, given the fact that we want to send over two boxes of hundred units, it would cost us seven pounds, 35 pence. 
and if I agree and accept these charges, I will then get charged and Amazon will provide me with a UPS tracking number. And that tracking number will then be used to schedule a collection, okay? And to schedule a collection is very, very easy, guys. You simply have to go onto Google, put in UPS scheduler collection, go on to the very first one here, and you have to fill all of this information in. Now to keep this tutorial nice and concise, I'm not gonna go through detail as to exactly how to put in each and every single part, but very, very quickly, you tell them that the pre-labels have already been pre-printed effectively because you already paid for them. You put in the tracking number over here, you type in all of the details here as in your details as to where they should be coming to collect these products from. Okay, you select, for example, in this case, it will be two packages and let's say it will be 20 kilos. You tell them the date that you want them to come and collect the product and then you will click next. And what will happen next is the UPS driver will come the very next day, knock on your door and will be expecting to be handed two boxes of 50 units each with the label already printed on each box, guys. It is really, really important to print off the labels that Amazon will provide you after finishing the um, shipment plan, okay? Because those labels will allow then the UPS driver to scan and collect the item and this is how you will be able to track where that item is, where those boxes are. Are they still in transit? Have they been delivered? Have they been checked in and so on? It is really, really important guys to make sure that the barcodes are stuck on, on each and every single product package and that the product labels are stuck on, on each and every single carton box. And with that being said, guys, let's move on to the next part. Right guys, so the very next part of the tutorial is all about SEO optimization. How do we make sure that we have the best possible chance of appearing on the first page as quickly as possible for as many different keywords as possible? We want to show our product to as many customers out there as we possibly can to get the best possible chance of making making as many sales as we can and therefore reinvesting into more products, more profit and so on. I cannot stress enough how important this stage is as well because it is really important for us to make sure the title is correct, the key features um, spell out exactly what the product is, why should somebody be buying from us as opposed to somebody else, what's so special about our product and so on. But most importantly, we need to figure out first of all, what search terms do customers use to find our product? product. That is going to be crucial. Now, some of the search terms that we will come across are going to be very obvious. We could have thought that from, you know, on the, off the top of our head, whilst others, we have to do a little bit of research around. So in order to do that, the very first thing we need to do is come across an Amazon's choice listing for our particular product. And in this case, we're going to use the yoga mat example. Now, what we can do is find the ASIN and usually it starts around B09, B07, and it starts with B0 something, okay? And you can either click on the listing, but given the fact that I have a Helium 10 tool, I can already see the ASIN right here. And I simply have to copy and paste this ASIN and go on to Helium 10. Now, if you you haven't got helium 10 guys this is so so important for you to have because like i said earlier it has so many tools when it comes to product research listing optimization analytics keyword research and many many more not only it helps you research and find the best possible product but it will also help you uh, manage your business on a day-to-day -day basis it will help you calculate your profit and make sure that you have the best possible chance of running a successful six seven eight figure business so, on this particular tutorial, we're now going to use their Cerebro tool, okay? And what it basically allows us to do is you type in the ASIN right here, you click on get keywords, and it will show us which keywords does that particular Amazon's listings, Amazon's choice listing appears for, okay? It will show us 870 different keywords that that particular listing is appearing for and it will give us a very good idea for which key phrases keywords um, we should be targeting which should be our main targets okay so and in this case right now, what I want to do in the very beginning is simply put in all of the search terms, okay, that this particular product is, uh, you know, suitable for, because if we're going to sell a yoga mat, chances are those search terms are going to be applicable for us. And as you can see here, I simply going to copy and paste 
all of the search terms that are applicable to us. Now, some of them are going to be very obvious straight away, whilst others may not be as obvious. And if they're not as obvious, you have to click on these little icons here. And if you click on them, it will simply straight away take you to the Amazon's listing for that particular search term. And then you can check whether or not yoga mats actually uh, um, show up on that um, listing effectively on that page. So what we're going to do is just we're going to continue using all of these and see until ones that don't actually make as much sense. So exercise mat as well. As of right now, I'm simply putting all of these onto my notepad. And as you can see, I've sorted it all out by search volume. So as you can see here, the yoga mat currently gets 76,000 searches each and every single month. That is a tremendous amount of searches. If you can happen to be on the first page or the very first few listings on the very first page, you are destined to make a lot of money in this particular niche given the search volume. Okay, and that is exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So exercise mat, next we're going to use yoga mats for women. Okay, we're going to go yoga as well. Okay, gym mat, that's a good one. Okay, home, I'm not gonna click on here as well, but I'm pretty sure if we put in home into Amazon, it's not going to come with a yoga mat, so I'm going to leave that out. Mat, most likely, gymnastics mat, yes as well. Okay, so you get the event effectively the picture. I'm trying to get as many of the relevant search terms as possible. Now, how many do I need? Well, you need at least 30 to 50 of the most searched terms. However, this will all depend on the niche that you get into. As you can imagine, certain products are much more popular than others. And Yoga Mat is a very popular product on Amazon, given that there are so many search terms here with a relatively high search volume. I personally would not bother with any keywords that have a search volume of under a thousand um, uh, searches each and every single month. So you can continue going down this path effectively. But I think for this tutorial, we'll now have enough examples. Let's let's just do a few more, maybe put in fitness. Uh, what else? Home gym. And I think workout mat will be a good one as well. I can safely say without even clicking on these that yoga mats will most likely show up if I put on work, workout mat, gymnastics mat, fitness and so on. So I don't have to double check that. Okay, so now that we have the search terms sorted out, the next thing we need to do is keywords. Okay. Now, keywords is really important. And as you can imagine from previous, uh, probably about half an hour ago, we were talking about the search terms that we have to put into Amazon's algorithm. We need to spell out to Amazon exactly what we want our listing to appear on. And this is exactly what I'm now going to do. So what I'm going to do now is put these in a simple format without any repetition, without any brand names, without any competitors or anything like that. So as you can see, I'm gonna put in yoga mat, I'm going to put in gym, I'm going to put in exercise, but now I'm going to leave out the mat because it's already been mentioned twice. Yoga has already been mentioned, mats has not, for women has not, yoga has already been mentioned, gym has been mentioned, so has mat, gymnastics has not been mentioned, fitness has not been mentioned, home uh gym has been mentioned workout has not been mentioned and so on so these are basically all of the keywords that i want amazon to consider for my product like i said before you can't repeat yourself i mean you're just going to use up valuable character space and you don't want to use any of the brand names so you don't want to use like if you're going to sell a mobile phone you definitely don't want to put in apple samsung sony or anything like that because that can potentially flag up your listing and suppress it for the time being temporarily once the keywords are done. The next thing we need to do guys is the title. Okay. Now, like I said earlier, and I'm going to repeat myself here is the main purpose of the title is to explain to the customer in very plain English, exactly what are they getting for when they click on your listing? You don't want to keyword stuff. You don't want to have three lines of words here to make sure you, you know, use up as many search terms as possible. You really want get to get down to the core as to what exactly you're selling, what exactly the customer is getting so they can make a very easy decision of buying your product as opposed to somebody else. So in this case, what I would do is I would put in yoga mat, exercise mat, given that both of those have got very, very high search terms. As you can, you can see here, yoga mat has got 76,000. Um, 
exercise mat has got 14,000. We're going to put in, um, let's say we're going to sell gym. Okay, so for gym mat effectively, then we're going to put in the color. So let's say the color will be red. And then let's say we're also going to put in, it's a UK brand as well, okay? Now, the reason why I'm putting in UK brand is because certain customers prefer buying from UK sellers as opposed to Chinese sellers because they want to support local businesses and so on. And this is why I would put down UK brand um, so to, to let everybody know that they are buying and they are supporting a local business. And then also what I could do beforehand is I can put in size, and then let's say, I don't know, 60 by 40 by three or something, the thickness or whatever. So people know exactly how, what the size of the item is. So now from here straight away, it's a nicely readable title where the customer knows exactly what they're getting, whether it's a gym mat, yoga mat, whatever, what the color, what the size is, and the fact that you're a UK seller. Okay, next up, key features. And this will be the last part for this tutorial here we have to explain exactly what the product is and this is the part where we want to use up as many of these search terms as possible okay so for example uh multi-purpose yoga mat okay and straight away i would take that out potentially because it's already been used and i would say something along the lines of our exercise mat can be used for many different forms of uh, exercise, of workouts, for example, okay? And straight away, as you can see, I've now used the word exercise mat, so I can take that out too, okay? The mat uh, comes in four different colors and can be used as a workout mat um, whenever this doesn't really matter like I said I'm doing this for the tutorial purposes but what you can see here and this is the most important part for me to show is the fact that I'm trying to use as many of these search terms as possible so if I use the word mat I will take that out I have used the word workout mat I will take that out as well. I want to use as many of these as possible. So then when Amazon actually looks through the text, they can see so many of these search terms having been used in the key features. And I would literally have five of these. The next one I would use is size and then speak about the size of the mat and add in different types of uh, keywords as well to make sure that I give the best possible chance of being on the first page. Like I said, guys, if the product is great, but it ends up being on page number eight, nobody's going to see it and therefore nobody's going to buy it. And with that being said, guys, let's move on to the next part. Right, guys, and the very last part of this tutorial is advertising. And this is so, so important. And I left it last on purpose because it is by far the hardest part of the Amazon FBA business for you to master and understand. And this can also be taught over many, many other hours. And this is why I have a course with so many modules around PPC. But in this tutorial, what I want to do is just give you a brief understanding exactly about Amazon FPPC, what exactly its purpose is, what they intend to do, and what exactly is the benefit of using it. Now, the very first thing about how exactly to go onto Amazon PPC is when you go onto advertising and you click on campaign manager, you will come onto this page right here. And this is where you get to choose your campaign type. Now, for those of you guys that don't know what Amazon PPC is, effectively, guys, this is where you pay Amazon your own money effectively to push your listings up onto the first page and have one of those sponsored product listings. This is where when you actually go onto Amazon some of the products will actually come up organically whilst others will actually show up with a little word of sponsored right next to it and that means basically that that particular seller has actually paid Amazon to push that particular product up onto the first page and here's the key guys every single time you click onto that sponsored product the seller gets charged and then they get charged anything from 10p all the way up to two to three pounds depending on how competitive that particular niche is and how much they get charged also depends on the bidding okay because Amazon all depends on how many people are bidding for that particular keyword the more people are bidding the higher the 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 price is going to be and therefore their job is to try and push up the price as much as possible when it comes to Amazon PPC 
Amazon's main job is to increase your bids and also increase your daily budget as much as possible because for each and every single click that a customer makes, whether or not they actually you, they, you sell or not, Amazon gets paid. Whereas your job with Amazon PPC is to make as many profitable sales as possible. So if you can imagine selling on Amazon, it's kind of like being at the top of a mountain and you're rolling down a ball of snow. And in the very beginning, you really have to push as much much as you possibly can to get the ball rolling. And then once this first sales come in, usually from sponsored products, from sponsored ads and so on, that's when the organic ranking is going to start going up. That's when you're going to start seeing your listing move up on page three, page two, and then eventually, hopefully page one. And that's when you will eventually start seeing organic sales. But to give that initial push, guys, we have to use external factors such as uh, Amazon PPC. So to create a campaign effectively, guys, we need to select one of the sponsored products, sponsored brands or sponsored display. And for us in the very beginning, the most effective type, at least in my opinion, and effectively the easiest one to understand is going to be sponsored products. Now, if you have your own brand on Amazon, you can go the sponsored brands route or sponsored display is for those that have like a video um, where you see sometimes. However, the problem with these two guys is that they are very, very expensive. Okay. So if you want to have Amazon PPC for as cheap as possible, you may want to go down the, um, the sponsored products route. So we're going to click on continue right here and then is going to create us a brand new campaign. And this is where we have to type in all of the information very correctly. Now I'm going to put in testing, but usually you want to put in your product names as a campaign name here. Okay. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody's going to know what your campaign is. It's just much easier for you to, um, to, to remember which campaign is for which product, which is why I use the product name. Portfolio, leave it blank. Start date will be the start of the actual, the, the same day, ideally, if your product is ready. Now, also something that I forgot to mention is before you start the Amazon PPC campaign, you really want to make sure that your product is completely finished. The images have been done. The title has been done. The key features have been done. Everything that you could possibly do to make your listing stand out, to make your listing as good as it can possibly be, that needs to be done before you start Amazon PPC, because the last thing you want to do is start spending your hard earned money on PPC and the images are still not finished. And what you'll have is customers actually clicking onto your listing, realizing that the images are not up to the quality that they want and simply clicking off, but yet you still get charged. Next up daily budget. Usually I keep that to no more than 20 pounds. Also, after that, we now have to go on to the automatic targeting or manual targeting. Now, again, I'm not going to explain the detail the difference between the two. However, in most cases, I would suggest manual targeting. This is where we basically tell Amazon exactly which keywords we want our listing to appear. Okay. Whereas automatic targeting will allow Amazon to make that decision for us. And some case it works in most cases it doesn't. Now I do have many more PPC tutorial videos in much, much greater detail. So you can check those out. Um, however, in this case, I would just say go with the manual targeting. We're going to leave the campaign bidding strategy as it is down only, whereas the other ones will give Amazon permission to actually actually um, basically increase our bidding by up to 100%. So let's say you bid for 50p, but because Amazon thinks you can convert to a sale, they will push up your bidding up to 100% and therefore push up to one pound. We do not want that to happen. And therefore we will say dynamic bids down only. And then we will create the ad group name once again, which is the product name here. And then we will have to select the product. So let's say we select this product right here. Okay. We select this product right there and then we have to go all the way down. And now we have to go on to manual targeting. Okay. Here we either target the keywords or we target product targeting. So if we go on to product targeting, we will then have to type in as to where do we want our listing to show up when somebody else clicks onto our competitors listing. But for this example, I would just choose keyword targeting. We come all the way down here. And now here we have the suggested keywords. Now in the very beginning, in my personal opinion, you should select this as a default bid. 
As a default bid and it should be no more than 50p. This means that we want to bid no more than 50p for each and every single click on one of the search terms. So the maximum that we will pay is 50p and then we will decide whether or not we want to increase those bids or reduce those bids later down the line. But in the very beginning without any information whatsoever we want to keep it at 50p. Then we have to filter whether we want to as broad phrase or exact and let me explain the difference so exact let's say we have gym yoga mat that means that only it will show up if somebody has typed in the exact keyword exact gym yoga mat if it's phrase then it can be gym mat or yoga mat or gym mat okay so you have to select certain keywords out of the search term and it will be as phrase whereas broad is by far the broadest one okay so it can be mat for gym yoga for gym yoga mat and so on it's much much broader so if it goes literally from broad to half broad and then to exact match okay we want to select all three of them and then click on add all now, as you can see, all of these add all will be defaulted at 50p. And then once that is done, we simply launch the campaign, guys, and we go right all the way down to here. OK, now for certain search terms, once we have a little bit of information, we can actually go on to negative keyword targeting and actually type in which keywords do we really not want our listing to show up. So here we tell Amazon do not show under any circumstances our product for these particular keywords, and that can be be very useful if you find that certain search terms are spending up a lot of your budget and is not bringing you any sales whatsoever. And with that said, guys, that's pretty much it with PPC. Once you have launched the campaign, it is really, really important for you to look over um, the PPC campaign each and every single day for at least the very first two weeks. You really want to pay close attention as to which keywords are showing you results and which ones are simply sucking up your budget without giving you any sales whatsoever whatsoever and you really want to pay attention as to which ones are profitable and which ones are not the key here guys is to make sure that majority of your budget majority of that 20 pound daily budget that i recommended in the very beginning gets used up on the keywords that are bringing you profitable sales those are the search terms that you want to push more of your advertising budget on whereas the other ones that don't bring you many sales or potentially are costing you a lot of money without any sales you want to either reduce the bidding or take them out completely and then once that's done you simply click on launch campaign and that's pretty much it and that's pretty much it guys for today's tutorial if you have made it this far first of all well done you are clearly determined and dedicated and you have the passion for it you have exactly what it takes to start off your own amazon fba business and go onto the path of financial freedom of financial success and making a difference to your financial future what's important here guys is to understand and that in this tutorial I went from A to Z exactly what you need to know to start off your own Amazon FBA business that being said guys there are a lot of things that still need to be learned as I said throughout the tutorial Amazon continues to change all the time and there are certain things along the way that still need to be explained in a lot more detail however in this tutorial I hope you found value in understanding whether or not Amazon FBA is for you whether or not it is doable now you get an idea exactly how much work you will have to put in and like I said in the very beginning of the video majority of Amazon FBA is all about putting all of the work in the very beginning once you have done the PPC campaigns once you have listed your very first product and now it is selling the only thing you really have to worry about is making sure that you stay in stock making sure that your products are very well optimized are active and are climbing up on the first page and making sales that is it so like with every single business model out there there are problems pros and cons with each and every single one the pro of Amazon FBA that it is a very very passive business model but you will have to do a lot of work in the very beginning and with that being said guys if you are looking for a personal mentorship or you're looking for a little bit of additional help you feel like this is something that you want to do in the future but you can be a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of information that you have then please don't forget to check the links down below for my own personal mentorship where I myself will help you and guide you every step of the way and if you're running on a relatively lower budget but you know you still want to use some of the business tools that I use and recommend then and please don't forget to check the links down below for helium 10 by far the best product research tool out there 
awesome, by far the most reliable e-commerce accountants out there in the market, or Tide, the perfect business bank account to start off your Amazon FBA business. And with that being said, guys, I literally just started up an FBA Mentor Academy Facebook group where you yourself can join up and speak to other existing sellers who may have already answered the questions that you have, may have already started selling on Amazon and are willing to help you completely free of charge. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.